All right, so you're new to motorcycling, you've just got a great deal on your first used bike, or you're firing your old bike up for a first time in a while, and something's wrong. It's not starting like it should, even though the battery is good, or it doesn't idle, maybe it leaks or sputters or stalls or backfires, or it just sounds bad. But don't take it to a mechanic just yet. This video is gonna give you the very basics of how even a noob like myself can solve about 90% of all problems to get your bike running just like it should. Uh, what's up ladies and gentle tubers? My name is Tyler and this is the Everride channel where we're all about dual sport, adventure, and enduro motorcycling tips and tricks. And today we're in my garage doing a little bit of uh, basic wrenching on the carburetor, showing you a few simple steps that will solve a myriad of problems from backfiring to sputtering to difficulty idling and starting. These are steps that anybody can do and it's just not as complicated as it sounds in most cases. And if I can do it, Anybody can do it, seriously. So first things first, before tearing into your bike, you'll wanna check the inputs of your system, air and fuel. First, the air filter. Most of the time, the air filter is the culprit. Air filters should appear relatively clean and sticky to the touch. That means they're oiled, and that's extremely important. Air filter maintenance is a subject for another video. If the air filter looks good, check your other input, fuel. Is your vent hose clear? It takes no time at all to check it with just a puff of air. Is the gas dirty or old? Old gas will have a darker color and smell kind of like varnish, and new gas smells just like if you were at the pump. And if you don't know how old it is, it's probably a good idea to just get rid of it. If you suspect that it's old, unhook the fuel line from the carburetor and let it drain out completely. You may have to tip the bike on its side to get it all out. If the gas seems good, check to make sure that there is enough gas in it. Is the petcock turned on? Are there any leaks or clogs in the line from the tank to the carburetor? These are easy steps to check, and if you're anything like me, they're often overlooked before spending a lot of time tearing into a perfectly good carburetor. If the inputs look good, chances are you've got a simple clog or, or the wrong jetting in your bike. Now jetting can sound extremely complicated, but don't be afraid. Just go to your local dealer, tell them everything you can about your bike, like the issues that it's having, if it has aftermarket exhaust, any kind of upgrades or mods, and the altitude that you plan to ride at. They sell hundreds of jets and they'll know exactly what to give you in your location. Uh, the best thing is the jets are only three or four bucks each and most times you'll only need one or two instead of a whole jet kit. So it's gonna put you out like 10 bucks. The next step is to loosen up the carburetor from the boots to the airbox and the engine. On the carbs that I've worked on, this just requires a Phillips head screwdriver or maybe a hex wrench. Loosen the bolts and guide the carburetor out. In most cases, there will be enough room to tilt the carburetor enough to work on the important bits without removing the throttle cables from the other side, and this will save a ton of time. If the bike will run, but runs really hot or raspy or idles high, you might have a leak in one of the boots or joints. So grab a flashlight and look for any cracks or wear. If you see any damage, definitely replace that joint. A search for carburetor joint and your bike model should come up with what you need to buy. You can double check the parts finder on most moto retailers websites and there's a link below so that if that sounds like a problem that you've got, then you can go right to their handy parts finder and uh, get that taken care of. So replacing these joints is a piece of cake. Next, we just take out the bolts on the bottom of the carburetor, also called the float bowl. A little bit of gas might leak out, so be prepared with a rag or a little cup. Now you can get to the float, the needle and seat, and most importantly, these little brass jets. If the bike isn't leaking any gas, then you don't really need to worry about these floats or the needle and seat, just the jets. You can test your floats and needle and seat by raising the floats, then turning the petcock back on and check to make sure fuel flows when you let the float drop and that no fuel leaks when it's pushed up. Now you can go two different routes. If you're not sure of the jetting on your bike, uh, I just buy new jets from your dealer to match your altitude and exhaust, airbox mods and all that stuff. However, if your bike was running well previously, like before winter storage, then you may just need some carburetor cleaner. Just spray it through the middle of these jets to clear out these very small holes. 
the long idle jet is a very small hole so that's what gets clogged the most and that's probably the most common problem so if you're replacing the jets I suggest just removing one at a time so you can match it all up and get them back in easier now you're either going to replace the jets with the new jets or check for any clogs in the old jets and then spray them out with carb cleaner now while you've got the carburetor out here you can adjust the fuel air mixture screw very easily it's inside this little hole on the engine side of the carb. You may need to do this after you check everything, but if there's a lot of backfiring or popping on deceleration, that means that there's unburnt fuel hitting the exhaust and exploding. So to fix this, you need to lean it out, which means to add more air to the mix, which will burn the fuel more efficiently. You can do this by turning the screw clockwise. If the bike is running too hot, you can richen the mixture or add more fuel by turning this screw out. So now you're pretty much done. Replace the jets, put the flow bowl back on, make sure the carburetor sits nicely back into these joints and fire it up. For a little extra smoothness, add some sea foam into the gas tank to help clean out any gunk that might be lurking in the rest of the carburetor or the fuel lines or whatever. And these steps should fix most problems. Save a ton of money over taking it to a shop and a ton of time for you as well. So thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentle tubers. If you've got any tips or questions of your own, I'd love to see them in the comments below. And if this video saved you some money or time, then please subscribe and hit the like button and check out my other videos about dual sport, adventure, and enduro motorcycling over here on the left. Thanks again for watching, guys. Much love to all of you. Ever ride out.